Hey everybody, thank you for joining me on this spontaneous end of the day sketch. Just finishing up the day here in the studio. Gonna do a little sketching. And I thought that today I was gonna do something pretty unusual. I don't do this very often, meaning sketching specific features. I usually really prioritize sketching the entire head, at least, at least the entire head, you know, but something about the lesson that I taught yesterday made me feel like I want to to do this today, something a little different, just focusing on one feature and seeing what I can learn from it. So, if you want me to answer your questions while I'm just jamming here, you can submit them at the question thing that you have below, the built-in question gatherer, and then I shall answer them. So start submitting them now, and then once I take a moment to pause, then we will see what all of you are writing. And we'll see, I might add color to this as well, I think I will because there's some interesting color going on around this eye and it would be really nice to actually capture at least a little bit of that so stick around if you want to see that and again if you want to submit questions I'll be addressing them pretty soon just go to the question icon below and write whatever is on your mind and soon I'll start taking those questions if you have questions and you don't understand English unfortunately I can't help you unless you understand Hebrew I can take questions in Hebrew but English and Hebrew are the only languages I speak, so if it's not in these two languages, it's gonna get a little tricky. Now here, this lower area of the lid is pretty red, so we're gonna put some of that color in here. And this is pretty red, and this is pretty red. There's a lot of red around this eye. So I'm going to go with what I'm seeing. This is me moving my chair back because I think standing up is gonna be more fun. It's like a post studio day workout. I'm going to define a little bit of this, the shape of this lower lid. So, as you can see, I'm trying to analyze and understand what's going on here in terms of the structure. It's the primary question. The three-dimensionality, how does this behave? This is also fairly pink. And then, there are also areas that are more yellowish. So, we'll start incorporating some yellow chalk as well. And the white chalk can bring these colors into a kind of weaved integration. So it does a lot of the heavy lifting here. It's going to be fairly impossible to do this in the way that I like doing it without using the white chalk a lot. So you can notice how I'm putting that into action. And making sure that the eye stays at least 
in its majority gray, because of course it's not as colorful as the lid. It has to stay at a much lower chroma and I'm not going to be tempted to make the eye too light. That's a very common mistake. Eye is not that light. Usually it's in shadow. So don't fall prey to the knowledge that you have about the color of the eyeball because the fact that it's a white object does not at all mean that it's going to end up being white when you see it in your life because again we have this thing called shadows <laughs> and they can make even the whitest object be pretty dark so if you take a white shirt and you put it in a dark room that shirt's not going to look white anymore so as you can see I'm focusing on creating the feeling of structure over here. This thing above the eye is like a shelf. And it has redness to it. A lot of blood vessels happening here above the eye. And there's also a lot of redness over here, right above this eyelid. This area tends to be pretty colorful when you look at an eye, so you can watch out for that. Okay, let's take a question. Okay. Where is the color chalks and everything you're using from? I'm assuming she's asking about brands. My black and white are charcoal from Generals. They are my absolute favorite company for these kinds of pencil products uh, and the color ones are Pit Pastel from Faber Castell and uh, yeah they do a very good job I think I like how they combine and uh, yeah they combine well with each other and they combine well with the charcoal so feel free to give these brands a try I really like them Generals in particular are an absolutely amazing brand. Even if you can't find the Faber-Castell pencils, General pencils will still be very good. The color pencils that they have, they also make them. Building the lower, lower lid here. It's a little bit more yellow, but of course still has a fair amount of red in it. Yeah, so it's like a, when you mix the red and the yellow and the black, you can create something that looks almost brown. Black helps a lot here for reducing the chroma when you need it. Okay, starting to, to take some shape, slowly. I'm going to take some questions soon, so make sure that you submit them. Just want to make sure that I'm not losing track of what I'm trying to do here. And it's holding the majority of my attention, as you might expect. Okay, I'm gonna take a question now. What is your advice on wanna be an artist with 17 and studying to get into university? Uh, my advice is make sure <laughs> you know what you're getting into. The art world is pretty brutal uh, study hard work hard but uh, it's really difficult to say kind of advice generally for artists because there are artists with such different practices I mean if you wanted to be a classical painter I would say 
you know, put a lot of time and effort into your craft. But if you want to be a pop artist, you know, maybe that's not so important. So I think knowing the kind of artist you want to be is a very important question that you should be asking yourself. And uh, then try to research and see what others in that in that field have done. You know, you have to keep your eyes peeled. Ha ha! No pun intended. Uh, and be very mindful of how the field you're getting into looks like, you know? Also, it wouldn't be a bad idea to make some plans about what you'll do for money because with art, it's very, very difficult to have that as your primary source of income when you're just starting out. It's extremely, extremely difficult. So it's going to be a few years when most likely you're going to need to get support elsewhere. And it would be prudent and wise of you to have a plan for that before uh, just jumping in, if that makes sense. Hopefully you catch my drift. Uh, the biggest issue with doing these lives with pencils is because I don't want to stop to sharpen. I want to keep this engaging. But <laughs> the pencils get dull at some point. So we'll see how we deal with that. Let's work on getting this as dark as it needs to be. And this person that I'm drawing has green eyes. So for that, we're gonna use some of the yellow. And we'll see what kind of green that helps us create. And a little bit of white, I think even, at least at the bottom area. White really helps when you're using this technique to pull things together, really, really helps. So this needs to be a whole lot darker still. And if we were to guess where the highlights would be, around here mm -hmm. all right I'm gonna take another question soon so you can write it down in the Instagram questioner thingy and I'll take a look so give us some good questions because I can't stop too long to pick so i just kind of pick whatever's at the top so make them interesting make them good make them something that's fun to talk about oh this is pretty fun actually just sketching one feature never do this i never do it this is like first time in years that I've just focused on one part of the face. Hopefully this is fun for you too. Oh, and of course I forgot. I need to let you know that next week on Wednesday I will be doing a live painting demo for my Patreon supporters. And we're gonna do it on Zoom, and you could ask your questions and get them answered. It's gonna be really, really fun. So if you want to get the Zoom invitation, all you need to do is become one of my patrons at patreon.com slash Ken Goshen. The people who support me on Patreon get access to lots of cool videos, but more importantly, they get to know that they are supporting me in my project uh, to bring art educational content to everyone. So 
the people who support me are a big part of my team and I'm very very grateful for them so if you want to become a supporter you can go to patreon.com slash Ken Goshen that's patreon.com slash Ken Goshen and you'll be invited to the event on Wednesday the zoom invitation is already up there so you can go there now and snag it and thanks in advance to everybody who's already a patron see we're getting we're getting somewhere here huh we're really making this thing come off the page slowly mark by mark gradually This needs to feel more opaque, this whole bottom part of this eye. So, I also want this edge not to be so sharp. <laughs> that was me just blowing some of the charcoal dust out. See, we're starting to attain this feeling of a green eye, slowly, but we are. With the yellow, once you take yellow to low enough chroma, it starts to look green. So that's a trick. You can take it to the bank and check it. So, if you have any more questions, you should find the question generator thing and ask them, because I'm going to take another question very soon. And it's more fun to be talking to you, to take this opportunity to hear from you. It's nice at the end of the day chilling out, just doing a little sketch. I'm gonna take this a little more red even. It's really fun to use the red like that on top of the black. It's very effective. Maybe even some red over here. I really need to work on the structure of this eyeball. And I've been lazy. I've been dealing with other areas. But this really needs some work. I like to weave the black and the white into each other. It makes such a nice effect. Let's take another question. So, are those pastel pencils? I can't seem to figure out how to work with those. Uh, yeah, so there are multiple kinds of pastel pencils. Uh, some pastel pencils are oily pastels, and those are very difficult, at least for me, to work with because they can't really be erased. What I'm using is, is chalk pastels uh, or pit pastels. And they are fairly straightforward, you know? You can see how I'm using them right now. I just kind of layer them one on top of the other. Uh, almost like uh, Prismacolor colored pencils, you know? They're very intuitive. And uh, I don't really know what else to say. They're just kind of fun. For me, any medium that's easy to erase is is a medium that is uh, more beneficial to train with because when you're working in ink or stuff like that and everything you're doing is, is pretty permanent, then it's very, very difficult to get better. Very, very difficult. Because, I mean, I, I guess you, you're gonna get better at other things, right? You're gonna get better at getting things right, exactly right on the first try. But it's not really the same thing you need if you want to be good at mediums like oil and even chalk pastel, things that really rely on modification and, and erasing.
Okay, fun, fun times. Really want to make sure that I have enough. I wanted to say paint, <laughs> enough chalk over here to make this look three dimensional. to expand the pupil a little bit I think or maybe even come at it from below that would work I think it needs to be a little wider I made it a tad bit too long let's see what I can do oh I know what I can do I can kind of close the eyelids on it. That's gonna help. So if I wanted to bring it down, I would just do this. There we go. All right, we're gonna take another question soon. So if you have something you wanna ask, submit it and we'll get it answered. Just after I put this eyelid where it belongs. Okay, let's take the question. Let's see. What are you asking? Uh... How long are you drawing? How did you start? Um, so I've been taking the practice of drawing and painting seriously since 2010. So that's 10 years now. That's nice. Uh, but of course, before that, I was I loved drawing as a kid. I think everybody who's who is an artist usually says that they enjoyed drawing as a kid. It's, it's hard to believe that somebody would just stumble into this career without loving to do, without loving this practice since they were young. And how did I get started uh, with my professional studies? I went to a painting school in Tel Aviv called Hatachana. And I studied there with the teachers who were incredible. And they taught me most of what I know. So if you want to learn how to paint or how to draw, it's a pretty good idea to find the people who can teach you and let them teach you. And this is a perfect segue to remind you that I do give lessons online and you can find all the information about them at kengoshen.com slash lessons. That's kengoshen.com slash lessons. And also to remind you, that on Wednesday, is that November 4th? I think it's November 4th. I'm doing a live painting demo for all my Patreon supporters. And you can become a supporter for as little as $2 and you'll be invited to that event. So if you want to do that, you go to patreon.com slash Ken Goshen. That's patreon.com slash Ken Goshen. And know that my supporters also have access to other really awesome video content. And most importantly, they know that they are supporting me in my attempt to bring art educational content to everybody who wants it. So thanks a lot to everybody who's already a patron and to everybody who's an upcoming patron. Thank you a lot too. Means a lot. This is really fun. Yeah, so I'm learning a lot about the colors over here from the sketch. This is really, really interesting. I'm doing this study as part of a longer process. So when you're working on a <coughs> painting or a drawing that's difficult and you want to deconstruct it, it's a 
pretty good idea to do some sketches of it on a separate sheet of paper to get some clarity about what you're trying to do and then incorporate all of that knowledge into that longer process. Sketching is very, very beneficial. I find that it's something that not enough people incorporate seriously into their practice. People just expect to only make finished pieces and that's really not, not how it goes. These pencils really layer so nicely on top of each other. It's a pleasure. I love this technique. Okay, so put some questions in there. I'm gonna take another question soon. So make sure you get it in there. yellow over here in this highlight hmm. and then this eyelid can close a bit And some of that pink flavor of the lower lid we will retain. And there's the most of it over here. A lot of light over here. Okay, let's take a question. Uh... So, here we go. I only draw with graphite right now. How do you make a transition to colored pencils? Well, in my opinion, the best way to learn how to mix colors is actually in oil. So I actually recommend practicing your color mixtures through oil because in pencil, there's, it's actually much more difficult since in pencil, you constantly have to think a million steps ahead, like in a chess game, because everything's about layering. But in oil, you can just mix the right colors on the palette exactly as you want them and just apply them to the painting. So it's a much more straightforward way to mix colors and makes it so much easier to learn. So if you really want to get better at uh, how to work with colored anything, whether it's pencil or it's... Uh, a different kind of medium, it's still, I think, the best idea to do it in oil first. Now we're really getting some structural integrity. Getting that muted pink slowly and steadily, layering it one layer after the next. See this kind of color mixing? It's not intuitive. It's like a million step process. But in oil, everything is very direct. You just say, oh, that's the color I need. Boom, that's the color you mix and you're done. So way more straightforward way more appropriate for learning color. The lower brow has more yellow in it, not brow, the lower um, lid. See, I really don't do this almost at all. I can't even say these words in English. That's pretty funny. And here we also have some more yellow happening, so we'll introduce that. It's funny, this yellow, the way that the company calls it, 
It calls it brown ochre. <laughs> what? Brown? What brown are you talking about? It's so yellow. Okay. Let's get some of this in there. A little bit of pink in this edge of the eye. And then here, this area needs to go more red and darker. So some red to start us off. Might be enough to make it as dark as it needs to be. It's cause the white is very important for getting those soft edges. Here I made an edge that's too sharp, which is not in my best interest. Try to fuzz it out here. Every layer should push the three-dimensionality, the structure, forward and forward. Let's take a question. Uh, hmm. When I work in one area, my charcoal scratches the paper. How can I avoid it? Oh, that's such a good question. So the charcoal scratches the paper means you're holding it like this, like you're writing. You can't do that. You have to hold it like this, you know, almost parallel to the paper. That way you're not working with the tip, but you're working with the side of the charcoal. And when you hold it that way, it's not gonna scratch anything. So, boom, there's your solution. No more scratches. Work with the side of the charcoal like this. No more scratches. How great when I can just answer a question so simply and boom, it's the right, uh, that's where you go. Okay. Let's make sure this is as dark as it needs to be. This is going to be a combination of red and black, this action here. There we go. Slowly but surely getting this shape to feel three-dimensional. And along the edge, it's kind of yellow. So let's see if I can make that happen. That's fun. And yeah, in general, I do recommend if you have some time at the end of your day do a little sketch, something that doesn't really matter, that if this eye sketch doesn't come out right, I'll just throw it in the trash, it doesn't matter. Don't only work on finished pieces. It's not healthy. You need some looser stuff to keep you creative and uh, loose enough in order to execute your more polished, prolonged pieces.
just really get this eyeball to work. Need some more layering over there to really get that deep, deep, deep black of the pupil. And then here it goes into this red area. This transition needs to be seamless. And layer more of that white. I'm trying to gain, gain control of this area. And for that, I really need to get rid of some shimmers that the paper still has. Which I don't want. Let's see what the yellow does. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. This is the lightest moment, so we must make sure that it is such. And longer pencil for this. They want to come at it from afar. Make it more opaque. And I'm going to take another question soon, so make sure you get it in there. It's very difficult to stop drawing <laughs> to take the questions because I'm so taken in by how fun this is. But I do want to get to what you have to say. So I'm going to pause. Let's do the question. Find a question. Uh... Boom. What's the best way to learn how to differentiate different values in reference photos? Uh, well, I'm going to first say the simplest thing, which maybe isn't obvious. Value is basically the degree to which something is either light or dark. So the easiest way to judge it, really, is to ask, is this closest to light or closest to dark? and try to distinguish whether or not something falls on one of which half of the spectrum. And then once you have that basic analysis, okay, it's generally a light color, it's generally a dark color, then you want to start asking, okay, what's the light test color in this entire photo, in this entire system? And you find the place that's lightest and nothing else is as light as that. Well, at that point, you know that's your highest value. Then you want to ask yourself, okay, what's the darkest area in this entire photo? And when you identify that, then you have your darkest value. And then you just start kind of having this elimination game of what's the second lightest, what's the second darkest, until you reach everything that's happening in the middle. But it's a process of like organizing that system between what's the edge, you know, edge case, the lightest, lightest, lightest that this photo goes. And the other side, which is the darkest, darkest, darkest possible value that this uh, photo goes. And then all the rest of the values are just somewhere in between. And it's your job to understand where. So elimination, find the poles and then build towards the middle. Very important, very good exercise. That's how I like to start. I even number them. Say, what's value number nine? What's value number eight? What's value number three? And uh, it really helps put things in the right place. Okay, getting nice. I'm enjoying it. Hopefully you are enjoying it too can let me know in the chat because if you're not enjoying it then I should not be doing it this is kind of for you for me to hang out with you oh and to remind you that on Wednesday I think that's November 4th 
Uh, I'm doing a live painting demo. I'm painting Rembrandt for my Patreon supporters. And you can be there too for as little as $2 support. That's right. You support me for $2. You help me bring art education to anybody who wants it by making all the videos that I do. And you get to be there live when I'm painting Rembrandt and asking me questions. And uh, it's going to be really fun. So you should go ahead and do that at patreon.com slash Ken Goshen or go to the link in my bio and click Patreon. It's very, very simple. And uh, thanks in advance to everybody who's already gone ahead and done that. I really appreciate it. Okay. This is uh, feeling pretty good. Happy with it. Because it's really fun. I might wake up tomorrow and hate it, but <laughs> for now, I think it's enjoyable. And I'm learning a lot from it, which is always one of the more important parts. You want to be, when you're doing a commission work, you're not necessarily learning from it because the key is to do what the client wants. But when you're sketching, sketching should really be for you. It should be your time to draw new conclusions, teach yourself new techniques. Sketching is your, your own mode of research. area needs to be a little darker a little more towards reddish brown and we can hopefully create that by mixing red yellow and black but then here it actually needs to be a little lighter so I should not have put a lot of black over there This area is more like a pink. Nice. Want to be really careful about my values. Values are, of course, the most important thing when you're painting, when you're drawing. It all really lives or dies by the values, kind of like in life. You want to have good values. Never compromise your values in life or in painting. Get it? I want to get rid of this line as soon as I put it down because it's supposed to be just a hint. Don't want to overdo it. All right. This is a pretty fun way to spend the evening. Just sketching a little eye, hanging out with you. If you have any questions, you want to put them into the question box below so that I can answer them. Oh, that was my finger. Creaking and knacking. Working a lot on getting this lower lid to look right. The structure of the lids really, really, really matters for the eye to feel whole because they're literally just pieces of skin that cover up the eyeball so they have a lot of influence on what we end up feeling when we're looking at an eye a lot of the expression the majority of the expression really is in the eyelids i think that's my opinion on it at least okay let's take a question Oops, that's not how you do it. Uh, what are you using as a reference? I'm using a beautiful portrait by William Adolphe Bougaro, who is a French neoclassicist academician, fantastic painter, a little maligned by art historians, snobby art historians. But uh, I totally disagree. People say that it's kitsch. I think it's magical. 
And it's not like I don't believe in kitsch. Other stuff is kitsch. Renoir is total kitsch. Hate that. But Bougaro, I would not say it about him. Not my opinion. Right. This looks kind of nice. Not unhappy with it. And yeah, I think I'll call it here because I'm pretty hungry. So thanks to everybody who joined me. And remember, you can become one of my supporters at patreon.com slash Ken Goshen or visit the link in my bio and click Patreon to join me when I paint Rembrandt live and hang out with all of you on Zoom. Thanks for watching. See you next time.